Hi, Rob here again, and I've just opened Reshade Image Enlarger, and guess what? It enlarges images. Now, you can do this in a number of ways. You can use an image editor, such as Photoshop, uh, or a range, the GIMP. Um, there are a range of them, a number of them, a lot of them. But they don't always give the best quality. Sometimes you end up with pixelation. It depends on the algorithms used, the techniques used in enlarging the image, basically. And there are better ways to do it. Now this could well be one of the better ways. On the screen you can see reshade. I've got an image already there on the left hand side you can see the final result if you like and it's processing away and there it is if I move it again on the right you can see once more it does its thing chugs away and comes out with a result now I'm not entirely happy with that and I've done some adjusting you can adjust the texture so there's a bit of a balancing act really I've got accuracy set high which is obviously good. You can reduce artifacts, you can denoise. I've got crop enabled. You can just see that I've cropped out a small area and I'm enlarging it. And it's a pretty big enlargement. And to be honest, you've got to start with the highest optics that you can afford on your camera, um, coupled with the, um, the most pixels you can cram into your sensor. If you need both of those, you can't really get away with um, cheap lenses and you can't get away with uh, a lack of pixels but I'm actually using an old uh, or relatively old uh, a digital SLR and it does actually have not that many pixels to play with but the optics are good so yeah it's a it's walking uh, along a, a, a tightrope if you like but you can get there you've got advanced options um, and you've also got at which increase fidelity, uh, smooth the gradients. It's all about quality. You balance. It's experimentation. You can get some interesting effects out of this program just by fiddling with the sliders. But I won't show you that right now. And you can do batch f um, processing, which is very handy. Uh, I have tried it with video production, and it's not so good at that. You can do it in small batches perhaps up to 25, maybe 50, but it's a bit tedious. And you do come, up, come out with some interesting effects, uh, as well as um, the possibility of higher quality. So it's worth a try, but uh, if you've got a typical uh, batch of, uh, say, 2,000 JPEGs, it'll take uh, up to 24 hours on my dual-core um, XP uh, box here to uh, and get the work done and it doesn't always um, sort of finish the job entirely successfully still worth playing with and briefly if we fiddle with the texture denoise is up turn the control to manual turn the accuracy right down I'll just show you some interesting effects and I'll turn the processing fidelity down I'll take best edges off and there you go and to me that's one of the nice features you can get some really interesting abstractish designs out of your photographs and you can manipulate them uh, as a batch uh, and turn them into short videos. Just so that you can compare side by side, um, I've opened Photoshop and I've got the reshaded and enlarged image on the left and I've got the Photoshop enlarged image on the right. Now this is not the latest version of Photoshop and bear in mind 
that you may get better quality particularly if you've got better optics on your camera but for the sake of comparison and just assuming away a few variances in color um, you can see side by side the one on the left to my eyes is a little bit more palatable I guess is the word I'd use it's mm, it's kind of sharper it's lost a bit of detail but overall I prefer it to the Photoshop enlarged image so as far as I'm concerned it's a slight win for reshader and I have used reshader on other photos with less emphasis on fine detail and it's it definitely is superior it if you're not looking for the absolute like perfection in sharpness of the hairs on a spider's head um, but you're looking for the overall look and feel of an image um, say of a person a portrait but you want it enlarged then reshader is a very good option you don't get that pixelation and you don't get the chromatic aberrations that you sometimes get when you push the magnification a bit too far in an image editor. Here's an example of what I mean where I've pushed it a bit too far in Photoshop and the colour goes a little bit astray. You get that fuzzing around the edges, that sort of splitting of colour. It's a chromatic issue a combination of the optics and just pushing things a bit too far uh, and also the uh, camera's electronics I'm not using the latest uh, iteration of uh, digital SLRs by any means here's an example again of reshader and it hasn't come out as well even though I've tweaked it as much as I seemingly could it's lost detail and I, I actually would prefer the Photoshop version for that particular image and again this is a reshaded version I'll rotate it around and it's come out quite well and uh, the comparable shot in Photoshop which would be this one at roughly the same size the Photoshop one is slightly larger but uh, to my eyes there's not much in it and in, in some respects you might find that you prefer the Photoshop version but there's a nice quality about the reshaded version there's a smoothness and it's adjustable that smoothness can be brought up or down by the slider and you can get a very nice result photographically I think it's a better image there's something a little less jarring about it anyway that's my take on it it's up to you to give it a try and decide for yourselves thanks for watching Rob out.